In this video, we will explore the UVW map modifier. Open a new 3ds Max scene and create a box. Let's say that this is a wall and I will make it 20 cm by 200 by 300. Try not all the sides of your box to be equal so that you can understand the technique that we will see now. Let's open the Material Editor and apply a V-Ray material. And add a diffuse map that has a pattern. I have selected a brick texture. Don't forget to enable so say the material in viewport so that you can see the texture in the viewport. If you are wondering, I got my texture from textures.com. The PBR menu. And I went to the bricks category and chose this one for our example. So what do we notice here? That the texture doesn't appear to be equal to have the same size in every side. And if we notice it carefully, we will see that the texture stretches to fit in each side. If we go to the box's dimension and change them, you will see that no matter the size, the texture always stretches to fit the size of the box. If we go to the coordinates rollout, and play with the tiling values, we can adjust the size of the texture but we keep having the same issue. We can't make the size of the brick of this side to look equal to the size of the brick at the front. That's when we need to use the UVW map modifier. In 3ds Max, U, V and W stand for the X, Y and Z axis. You can see the X, Y, Z axis at the bottom left corner of its viewport and we can also see them when we select an object. There are a lot of different ways that we can adjust the UVWs, but the UVW map modifier is the easiest and simplest way. Select the box, go to the Modify tab, click on the Modifier list, Scroll down and select UVW map. And now it looks worse than before, but don't worry. So why does it look like that? If we check the parameters of the UVW map, there are several ways of mapping. The default one is planar. And if we quickly go through each option, you see that the way the texture is projecting on our object keeps changing depending on the mapping method. Let's go back to Planner. So what does Planner mean? See this plane over here that appeared the moment we added the UVW map modifier? The Planner mapping means that our texture will be projected on a flat plane. And for you to fully understand this, I want you to go to the Modify tab and to the UVW map modifier. This modifier comes with a submenu. That's what the arrow means next to its name. Click on the arrow and the gizmo option appears. Select gizmo. When enabled, it gets this blue color and the XYZ axis move to the center of the object where this plane is. If we drag the cursor, the texture moves accordingly. The model itself is not affected. We are not moving the model we are moving the texture on the object. So, when Gizmo is disabled, if we use the Select and Move command, we move the object. When Gizmo is enabled, if we use the Select and Move command, we move the texture and the way it projects on the object. Let's drag it to the side so that you can clearly see the plain shape. As I said earlier, the planar mapping means that our texture will be projected on a flat plane. With the gizmo enabled, if we now choose the Select and Rotate command 
enable the angle snaps and rotate by 90 degrees, now the texture applies accurately on the front and back view, but not on the sides. Flat plane means that there are no sides, so no matter how we will rotate the plane, it can never project on all sides of the box at the same time. When we have boxy shapes, and now we literally have a box, we need to use the box mapping. Now the texture projects on all sides, and we see here that the reference shape is a box, but it still doesn't look correct. Let's see what other parameters do we have here. The length, width and height values define the size of the texture. If I type 100 by 100 by 100, I am setting each side of the texture to be 100 cm. Let me also open the photo we downloaded. So, I am letting the software know that this side is 100 cm and this side is also 100 cm. Now, it's good before we go and type values to first do the math so that we are putting in correct values. What do I mean by that? Let's take a look at our photo and let's assume that each brick is 22 cm long. So, since we have 10 bricks in a row, this side must be at least 220 cm plus the gaps in between each brick. That being said, I will come to the length, width and height values and make them 240 cm each side. This one now is more accurate. Now, the texture has the same size on its side, but on the sides we don't have the correct orientation. To revise that, enable Gizmo and choose the Select and Rotate command. Make sure the angle snap is enabled so that you can rotate by specific degrees. If we right click here, we can set the degrees we want to rotate by. Click on the red circle and rotate by 90 degrees. Now this is perfect. Below the length, width and height values, we see the UVW tiling. In these fields, we set the amount of times the texture will repeat. So, if I make the U value 2, I am asking the texture to become twice as dense on the X axis. If I make the V value 2, now I have scaled down the full texture and made it twice as dense. Once we have set the correct scaling of the texture, we can use the SELECT AND MOVE command to move the bricks around if needed, so that we don't start and end with half a brick. You can also use the SCALE command to adjust the size of the texture, but this is something in general I wouldn't advise you to do, simply because then you lose track of the size of your texture. Here it shows 240 centimeters, and no matter how you will scale it, this value doesn't get updated. If we have moved the gizmo and click uh, the center button, it will center it to our object, but then any adjustment we have made on the position of the texture is lost and restored to the default one. Same goes if we hit fit. Then, the size of the texture matches the size of the object and so it stretches to fit its side. A useful command here is the bitmap fit. When we click on it, the Select Image dialog box appears and we need to select our bitmap. The size is not correct, but the shape is. What do I mean by that? The size of the UVW mapping adjust to the sides of the texture we loaded, so it informs us that the original bitmap has a square shape. For you to understand this better, let me load another image. This wood texture. which you can also see here that 
this one has a rectangle shape and not a square one. So if I hit again the fit bitma button and load the texture, the UVW mapping adjusts to the new shape. As I said before, the size is wrong, but this helps us understand the correct proportions we should be keeping. And if I make this 200, now I'm starting to stretch the texture and distort the proportions. Enough with this box. Let's now open our scene. Let's open the material editor, create a new V-Ray material, and go to textures.com to download a fabric with a pattern. I will select this royal fabric. And let's apply it to this pillow. Let's also apply the same finish to the pillows we have over the windows. So you see that we apply the exact same V-ray material, but the scaling of its object is different. Let's first select this pillow and add a UVW map. Let's also isolate the pillow and turn to a perspective view so that we can zoom in and see it better. Select the box mapping and I will make the size 50 cm on each side. Go back to the camera viewport and to the full scene. Since both objects have the same texture assigned, they should also have the same scale. Instead of selecting those pillows now, adding the UVW map and setting the size, what we can simply do is to select this pillow, go to the Modify tab, right-click on the UVW map we applied and choose Copy. Then, come to these pillows, go to the Modify tab, right-click on the editable poly and choose Paste Instance. Now the settings match and any changes we make on the UVW map of one of those pillows, the other one will get adjusted at the same time. Let's do the same for the bed throw. Apply the same material and paste the UVW map. See how easy it is. Let me now go and download a marble texture. I will create a new V-Ray material. and apply it to the sink and let's isolate it and return to a perspective view to zoom in. So, although from far away it looks ok, when we zoom in we see a seam over here. Let's add a UVW map. and select box. So what do we notice here? 
The texture unfolds as you can see on this helper, this box. And we have one texture here, another on this side, another on this side, and so on. And where those sides connect, there is a seam. For shapes like this, it's best to choose the cylindrical mapping. And now the texture unfolds cylindrically and there are no seams. Since the original texture is square, I will put here equal values, let's say 60 by 60 by 60, and I can adjust the scale of the texture from the UVW tiling. If we check the bottom of the sink, it doesn't, the texture doesn't have unfold properly. To do so, we need to enable the cup. I hope now it's clear how you can use the UVW map modifier.